My husband is in the middle of a live with Broke Farmer, uh, Stacy, and uh, Bobby. So yeah, um, let me get my ring light from him real I quick, people. Let me see who's in the chat. Woo! The chat is hot, honey. Yes. Hey, Tasha Oshi Grove. Hi, Cherie Black, Black Tropical Homestead. Peekaboo, honey. Yes, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Oh, Auntie Ellen, you have to resubscribe? What happened? Okay, well, I'm just happy that you did it. Hey, Lala, how are you doing? Good Times Homestead with Jen and Steve. That's right, I left him. Woo, and you came to me. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I appreciate my brother, my cousin, Broke Farmer. Yes, appreciate y'all. Now the husband has given me my platform back. Can y'all hear me? Show of hands if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Today, I'm not wearing any of my merch. I am actually wearing a shirt for my alma mater, the University of Virginia. Wahoo, wahoo, the Cavaliers. Okay, what y'all know about the Cavaliers? <laughs> yes. Hey, G Mama Girls, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Hey, Searching 47, how are you doing from California? So, are you four or five hours uh, behind us? People want to know. Oh, yes, la la. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 Okay, y'all gotta um, forget me. I got a little singing Tourette's going on. I can hear you on broke and your love. And your love. I'm loud or I'm loved? Which, which one is it? Am I loud and loved? Yeah, he's like in the middle of my reg regularly scheduled lives still going on in their live. But I understand. I appreciate them. Hey, Gina. How are you doing? Yes. Hey, Latanya Lewis. How are you doing? Hey, Henrietta, how are you doing? Thank y'all so much for those who joined us last night. As you know, my husband is monetized. It's hard on these YouTube streets, but he did it. And for those who are subscribed to his channel, we thank you. And for those who aren't subscribed to his channel, we thank you for going over there and hitting the thumbs up button while you keep my dialogue window open. Hey, peekaboo! Anywho, today I'm gonna make what I would call a hashtag fast fix. Yes, it's a meal that you can cook in less than 30 minutes. Woo, hey Barb Brownlee, how are you doing? Hey, the chicken, how are you doing? I do have to watch your video that you tag me in, so yes, I'm gonna get that going. Um, yesterday evening after we did that, I was doing a little bit more packing because as many of you know, I am headed to Canada tomorrow with my youngest son, Sharif, who recently graduated from high school. And I asked him, you know, I figured that he would like to travel for his graduation gift. And that he did. And um, Canada was at the number two on his list of places he wanted to go. London was number one, but when everything broke out with the Ukraine, um, yeah, I wasn't feeling too comfortable about going overseas. Although that's not necessarily like close, whatever, but it was too close for comfort. So um, his second um, place that was on his bucket list was Toronto. So we're going to Toronto tomorrow and we'll be there all next week. So y'all keep us in your prayers. And um, yeah, so as many of you know, I am the cook in the family. So what do you do when the cook in the family is gone for five days? You can go on a fast. You could eat out every day. You can do his microwave, chronicles of the microwave. That's a little joke. So when my husband comes home from work and he works for himself, he's self-employed. He has an automotive repair shop. It's called The Beamer Shop. Check out his other channel. He comes home and when he opens up the microwave, there's a meal waiting for him. And when I am gone or traveling or really, really busy, and then he's like, he opens up the microwave and there's nothing there. And then sometimes they're, 
Hey, Brampton. I haven't gotten into that yet, but how are you doing, Brampton? For those who don't know Brampton Gardner, she's in Canada. Well, where I'll be going? I had to check. I have some brownies in the oven. So I'm making a quick meal today. But before we get into what I'm making, I will tell you the title of what I'm making. Hey, Miss Native Cherokee. I have to look at two things because I'm, I'm doing the live on my phone. So that's right in front of me. So when you see me look down, I'm looking in the chat because it's easier to read the chat on my laptop. Hey, Micro, how are you doing? Micro Farmer. That was so upsetting about the people coming into your front yard stealing your acorn squash. And I love acorn squash, I promise you. Yeah. Turn the timer off. But my brownies need just a little bit longer. We're having brownie a la mode. But it won't be ice cream. It'll be um, tel tel telenti. Okay? Gelato. I'm making a chicken pot pie and a beef pot pie. We will eat the chicken pot pie tonight. Probably not all of it. And Sunday we'll have the rest of the chicken pot pie and the beef pot pie. He likes leftovers, so that whole um, beef pot pie will last him probably for at least three days. My husband is not a big eater. Matter of fact, he gets visually full when he looks at a plate full of food. I mean, literally. Like, it almost to the fact where he like loses his appetite, so yeah, he's not a big eater. Like, oh, let me just pile on a bunch of food and this, that, the other. No, nah, that doesn't work out too well for him. So you gotta, you gotta know your family, you gotta know. Yes, the wife won't show me the video. Mm, yes, his wife knows who took the acorn squash from their front yard. That was crazy. Hey, best yet journey. How you doing, Lydia? Peekaboo. So, <clears throat> my friend was over here while my husband was live, and I wanna do this for the content creators because once you're on YouTube and you're used to being on new YouTube, um, you probably don't realize how much other people don't know um, how to navigate on these YouTube streets. Hey, Love Notes, how are you doing? So, one thing. If you are watching this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Sister, appreciate it. If you are watching this video and you are not in the chat, please come to the chat because the chat is where it's at. Now, if you're not used to the chat, and prior to me coming on the YouTube, I didn't even know there was a chat on YouTube. Matter of fact, really, I didn't even know about subscriptions <laughs> until one day I was following someone and they literally said, subscribe to the channel, turn, you know, turn, blah, blah, blah. But then I didn't know about the notification bell having different um, levels. You can do all or some or whatever or so, whatever. And I was like, so, I think as content creators, when we put out um, content, we need to be mindful that everyone who may look at our video may not know how to navigate. So if you put out a video, it'll be great for you to tell them, hey, before we get further into this video, if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell, and then when it drops down, turn on all so you'll know when all content is uploaded. And if, you, and if you can, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't want to give me a thumbs up now, at the end of this video, can you please give me a thumbs up? And guess what? Sharing is caring on YouTube. So you can share this on your other social media or share it with a friend. Text it to them. Okay? Now, if you are going live, though, and I do this for, especially, you know, my following on LinkedIn, and they come in, and some of y'all have met them now. They're starting to come in more frequently and they don't really do YouTube. So then I tell them, come into the chat and I tell them where the chat is. Don't assume that everyone who's watching YouTube understands all of that. Almost every single person that I came in contact with that has subscribed to my channel, that's not a part of the garden community, they did not know anything about community tabs at all. I literally had to show them what a community tab is. So. If you're a person and you don't know what a community tab is, so if you're watching this, if you go over, you're on my channel, go come out, keep the dialogue box open, come out, 
you'll see videos, you'll see playlists, keep going over. You'll see community tab and a community tab is like a board where you can post text, you can post pictures, you can post links to um, various things. It could be a video, it could be a link to go to a website. But that is something that YouTube creators have once they get 500 subscribers, which I just did in the past 30 days. So praise the Lord. Yay. Hallelujah. I'm so happy. Got my community tab. Now, keep on going over and you can see the about. Okay. So that's just a little something. And probably if you can incorporate it, because even I send people who are not nearly involved in YouTube to um, people that I like their content and whatever. And they were like, yeah, I saw the person's video, but I don't know how to find it again. Well, the person didn't give them a reminder. Subscribe to the channel. How do you subscribe to the channel? What to turn on? The notification bell, but then they say, well, then I missed the content. Well, did you turn on the all? I didn't know that there was an all notifications you could, you know, it's like live and learn. But if you are the content creator, it is your job to educate. You may not be an expert when it comes to gardening. You may not even be an expert when it comes to whatever it is you're presenting. But you better be an expert when it comes to marketing your channel. I promise you on everything. <laughs> what y'all talking about? Y'all like, Dorsha, I need you to get the cooking system. I don't ask people for their groceries when they come home from the store. Why do people expect my garden harvest? Okay, peek -a I was probably walking into someone else's conversation that had nothing to do with what I was talking about. And Dale, hey Andale, how you doing? Yes, yes, ring that bell. You can ring my bell, ring my bell. How many people know that song? Unicorn Lady Tech, how you doing? Mention making comments and replying to them. I'm working on this. Okay, that's a very good one. Thank you, Unicorn Lady Tech. So, I would say to someone, hey, did you see what I posted? Or did you see my video? And they were like, yeah, I liked it. Now, I have to tell you, on other social media, I am not a commenter. I react and I keep it moving. I am not one of those people that feel the need to comment on everything that I see. But what I have learned in the YouTube streets is because YouTube does not tell you that someone liked your video. It does not tell you that someone liked your post. It only even lets you know the people who subscribe to you if their subscriptions are public. If their subscriptions are public. Okay, so for someone to truly know that you watch their video, you leave a comment. Now, somebody say, well, it's not that serious. Well, it just depends on the level of relationship that you're trying to have with the individual, right? So I still, for some people, I'll just thumbs up. I'm just giving them support. I really like it, whatever. But I don't have a lot of bandwidth and time to be on YouTube endlessly. And I'm like, oh, I just so haven't seen it, but what? Or I may just do an emoji, whatever, because I want them to know that I'm supporting them, right? If you are a content creator, it's like do on the others as you would have them do on you. At the end of the day, for people who are like me, it's still going to be a challenge because even on LinkedIn, I drop content. I'm a content creator. I don't absorb and consume a lot of content. I drop it and then I go. But because there is a measure of customer service that is built into you being a content creator, you do need to interface with your audience, okay? So God bless me with a 10,000 plus audience on one of my platforms. So therefore, I need to engage them. So they're saying something to me, right? And they're like, oh, Dorsha, that was beautiful. I think that's wonderful. I pray for you and your family, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to sit there and give them a whole paragraph, but I am going to let them know I'm going to react and I may comment depending on what is being said. Happy birthday. Well, thank you. If you took the time out of your day to wish me a happy birthday, not only am I going to react, I'm going to say thank you because those characters that you typed, that was time out of your life where you could have been doing it for someone that you love as a part of your tribe, but you decided to share it with Dorsha. And guess what? I appreciate it. Thank you. So anyway, but it, it, it can be whatever you need it to be. But if you feel in some type of way, 
Like, I'm sitting up here liking someone's videos and da-da-da-da. They don't see that. No, they do not see it. They do not. All they see are numbers. YouTube, it shows you number of views and numbers of likes. I got my likes turn, turned off. Really, it's like, well, what, what do you care about how many likes that I get, right? But if you wanted to see them, I mean, you know, if you really, really wanted to see how many likes I got, I could turn it on. I could, I could screenshot it and then send it to you if, that, if it's that important to you. Some people want it on. It doesn't matter. The whole point of the story is YouTube shows numbers more so than anything else. If you want something different, comment. Comment. The um, content creator can like it. They can heart it. They can reply. Whatever. Um, so just want to make you aware of that. And um, yeah, um, think about this. There are over, what, 40 million people or so plus on YouTube or probably even more than that. I can't remember the latest numbers, but oh no, that was how many authors are on Amazon, excuse me, because uh, when I dropped my other book and it was like I'm in the top 1% of, you know, authors on Amazon, it was like, what does that really mean? Well, when it's like 40 million people, what does it mean to be the top, right? So it was like, I'm in the top 4 million. Woo! No, I'm in the top 400,000. Like, okay. So anyway, I hope I didn't bore y'all all that. Miss Native Cherokee, I was subscribed to you just, but it seems that you two unsubscribed me. Good thing I checked. Well, I appreciate you for coming back. Love brought you home, girl. Love brought you home. Hey, Melissa, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. I watch TV, so usually can't comment, but I check the chat on my phone during lives. Yeah, that's nice when you're able to have an experience. Okay, let me check on this because y'all were talking about me the other day. How, um, <laughs> uh-uh. Okay, so last night when my husband went live, it was a couple people, I'm not going to say all of you, they called me out. When I'm cooking and I'm talking, sometimes I may say, chat, I need your help. Tell me when X amount of time is over because I was having some issues with this timer on the oven and trying to, it wasn't going off or whatever, whatever. So I said, y'all let me know. Well, I'm talking to you on this phone, but I got to read the chat over there. So what happened is I was making jalapeno cheddar popovers. I put butter into the oven, into the little muffin tins. And then all of a sudden, started smelling something. Like, and the butter was burnt. Now, I can take accountability. Yeah, it was the, my part of this. But I asked my audience to help me. Now, some people said that they were, but it's hard because I got this chat and this chat and I'm trying to keep up. I'm heading to my kitchen, going to cook a while while listening while. Okay, well, peekaboo. There's nothing like us cooking in the kitchen together, okay? So, they called me out last night. He was doing his live. What did that have to do with anything? Absolutely nothing, but he just brought it up just trying to be funny, so. Anyway, chicken pot pie, beef pot pie. I'm gonna share a couple of things because these, this is not long and drawn out. These are quick fixes, right? Now, you can, of course, amend this any way that you want to. Anyway, I won't be offended. It's what's going into your stomach. It's what you feeding your family, what you feeding yourself. However, it'd be nice if you had um, a pie dish. So I have two of those, okay? We're gonna start the chicken one first. Have you ever seen these in the market? It says made with no hormones, no steroids, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. I got two bags of this. I just sub to Garna. Popeyes on my favorite. Okay, see this? Chicken. Walmart, holla at your girl, great value. It is a great value, mixed vegetables. Two pie crusts. Uh-oh, light two grams. 
cream of chicken with herbs, cream of chicken with mushroom. Now, I'm going to take you down with me so you can see what I'm going to do. That'll be so simple. I mean, you can be like, well, I don't want canned this, I don't want canned that. Well, then guess what? You can turn it into a Sunday supper and you can sit there and you can do your chicken. Matter of fact, you can grill the chicken, you can cut it up, you can make your own pie crust. We all, well, most of us know how to make pie crust. And if you don't, just go on the internet. It's very simple. You need some flour, you can do lard, you can do butter, whatever. Make you some pie crust. And if you want to do your own sauce, whatever, you can do that as well. Get you some bouillon, get you some heavy whipping cream, get you some herbs. Yeah, and get you a little bit of chicken broth, honey, and you can make it do what it do. But for all, all intents and purposes, we're not doing that today. We're going to kick out these two together. I'm going to show y'all how to do it. Hey, Rain and Glory, how are you doing? Pick a book. I'm going to bring y'all down with me. I'm going down. There you go. All right. So, um, let's start with our dish first. I have my cooking shears. And I told you, every one of these cooking shears. What I like about these cooking shears is that they come apart. You want to make sure your um, cooking shears don't rust. And this way you're able to dry them um, thoroughly and there is no rust, okay? I've had these for three years. I'm going to roll, roll this onto the bottom. And I let them get room temperature so they're malleable, okay? I see black tropical. I use that chicken for salad. Yes, it's great for, um, you know, even if you wanted to do a, a Caesar salad. Now line this up around your pie dish. Okay. Now, if I were doing my crust from scratch, I could actually put this in a 13, a nine by 13 dish, more, even more crust. I mean, if I'm doing it for like, if the girls are here and Amir is here, so then we're automatically a family of six, okay? Now, here's a bowl. Get you a bowl. <clears throat> now, uh, the ingredients outside of the corn need to be cooked, okay? Um, like your chicken needs to be cooked. And this is cooked. Okay, you see that? And it is seasoned, but I am going to add some more pepper. I love pepper. I let the frozen vegetables sit out a little bit. So now that heart, so they're actually soft to the touch. Okay. We have that. I open this. Let me get a spoon so I can take it out the can. This is so simple. And then also, it's something that you can teach your children that's simple to make as well. I get the two because they have um, different flavors, but they complement one another. So this one is the cream of chicken with herbs. Now, there are some people, and I can't assume that everyone knows this, but a lot of the soups that are made like this, the cream or whatever, you can eat, you can have them as soup, but they are um, like meal enhancers to be able to be used inside of meals, okay? This one, all I have to do is just pop it. This is the cream of chicken and mushroom. And I'm not adding any broth or anything to this. These are going to be good as is. Now, you could add some garlic powder, some onion powder. You could add some cayenne. You could add some... Um, 
You could add some herbs, some basil, which I just may add some basil to this. Because the chicken and the soups are already flavored, my suggestion would be not to add salt. Not to add salt to this. There is enough salt to the, the chicken and the soups. So, just because you can do something doesn't mean necessarily that you should. So, there you have it. Now, here's your dish. Can y'all see this well? I hope y'all can see this well. Bye, Aunt Ellen. I'll see you. The LinkedIn streets, the Instagram streets, we will see each other. I love the content that you're posting on IG. Well, of course, you know that I'm liking it because IG shares with you. For some reason, YouTube does not want to share. <laughs> okay. There you go, people. You see how simple that is? I like the fact that Dorsha doesn't put sliced bull eggs in her. Ooh, who does that? EJ, how you doing? What an easy way to make a pot pie. Thank you. I'm not trying to put anyone down, but I know a lady that put eggs in her. Hmm, that sounds interesting. I don't think I would want to try that on the family that's accustomed to eating it this way. So, now... Get your other pie crust. And the other thing, if you want to um, do this in an aluminum pie um, dish, then you can freeze it. Have it for the family, okay? Peekaboo. Hey, Miss Shirley, how are you doing? Let me put this on here. Okay. Now. Yes, I want this to be easy. I'm folding the bottom one and the top one together. Turn it around, turn it around. We are getting down. Nice and simple, fam. And if you would like um, this um, simple recipe, although it's simple, you might be like, okay, I'm gonna have to watch this again. You can watch this again, or you can go to a video that I've done under my playlist called Fast Fix, okay? But as I share with you in the beginning of this, I'm making two pot pies. This one is chicken and it has mixed vegetables. Now, you do not have to just use the vegetables that I use. You can use whatever vegetables that you want to. But this is one that I do. It's a family favorite. There are some people that might want to put celery in here. You could do frozen celery, which may fare a little bit better. Or you could do fresh celery. If you do the fresh celery, make sure that you let your um, vegetables cook. I mean, um, thaw a little bit before you do the fresh celery. I'm really not a fan of celery like that. Now, there are certain things that I do like it in, like a seafood salad or some chicken salad, like the chicken salad that Publix makes with the cream raisin and stuff. I can do that. But I'm really not really a big, like, ooh, let me eat some celery, some crunchy stuff. No, but I do like it in my homemade dressing, but I use a food processor. Now, let me um, find my little pear knife. It was over here. Now, you can do an egg wash for this if you wanted to, and you can brush that on top. I'm not going to do an egg wash, but you could. But if you do an egg wash or not, you need to do some slits at the top of your pot pie so that it can... Um, seep through and it won't end up coming out of the sides You don't want an explosion. So this serves for ventilation purposes. Okay, just like if you were doing 
a homemade apple pie. Okay, was that simple? Now, it makes the egg wash will, you know, seal, well, it can do a couple of things. It can seal in your crust, and then it also creates a nice crunch to your crust as well. It can do a nice egg wash. It can seal all of this, and then it can create a nice golden crunch, a crust, but you don't have to. And I'm getting ready to show you that you don't have to. So anyway, one down. I'm gonna put it in the oven. I'm putting that in the oven at 400 degrees. It'll probably be in there for about 20 minutes. Now, that's another good thing about making these one um, pot dishes is that, hey, that's your whole meal. It has your starch, your meat, well, your protein, and your vegetables. Now, you can do a salad on the side. You can never have too many vegetables, okay? But that is something that, you know, if I really didn't feel like making a big meal or something, I can do that for the family. Now, um, I'm getting ready to rinse this out and get ready for the beef pot pie. Thing, this is the thing that I love about cooking is that baking is more of a science but cooking is more of an art so you just adjust it to your taste buds okay everyone doesn't like the same thing so if I'm making this and you're like well I don't like this and I don't like that well then you just amend it to your taste buds but i just gave you the framework and then you just make it your own okay peekaboo hey lp love ray from broke farmer thank you blood broke farmer i appreciate you hey sweet spot i haven't seen you in a second sis how you doing peekaboo you showing your peekaboos yeah, well, I can't see. I can't see anything else. Now. He's saying y'all looking at my peekaboo. Hey, my granny garden. Hey, shortcake. How are you doing? Myra, thank you for coming. He sent you, but you didn't have to come, and I appreciate you, sister. Hey, Tammy. Love, hugs, and kisses to you. We just put a, a chicken pot pie in the oven. Now we're getting ready to get down with the get down. I'm going to show you how to make a short cut. These are shortcut fast fix meal, hashtag fast fix meals that you can make and they will be done in 30 minutes from prep time, cook time, and it's a wrap. You hear me? Yes. You don't have to go to Chick-fil-A to get that. Now, that would be a family size pot pie, honey. Woo! Praise the Lord. Now, for my beef one, You'd be like, Dorsey, you're about to basically do the same thing. Eh, there's different ingredients, though. So, here's the beef. Where's the beef? Y'all remember that from back in the day? There's the beef. With this one, I like to do peas and carrots. Once again, you can have it your way. ba 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 ba, -ba. I'm loving it. Bam. But this one, just a little bit more work. You'd be like, slow down, Dorsha. I'm trying to show you. This is fast fix. Now, I did rinse these off. I'm going to rinse them off again. I cut them. I cut them. And I'm getting ready. I mean, I took the skin off with using my paring knife. Now, I do have a pillar but i'm just old school like that and there are other people that are out there like me it's like yeah i have these little gadgets and stuff but you know some things are just easier now do you see the size that i made these 
potatoes. You don't want them too big because they need to cook. They need to be able to cook with stuff that is basically already done, okay? So, I just wanted to put that out there. So you'd be like, Dorsha, I made it and my potatoes, they were not cooked all the way. Well, you made the potatoes too big. You make them smaller. I did too, just in case this potato didn't give me what I wanted, but I think it's going to give me what I want, so I can save the other one. Yes. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use the other one. There you go. Sometimes, you know, have you ever cut a potato open and there was like parts of it that was like brown and you're like, I didn't see that from the outside and then bam, there you go. Hey, Miss Shirley, how are you doing? Don't forget to hit me up, info at dorshadawkins.com so I can teach you how to set up things for when you premiere your first video. Hey, Mar Mar. Hey, Bro Farmer. Hey, cousin. Thank you for sending love over here. I appreciate you. So, once again... I let the peas and the carrots, Walmart, holler at you girl, the beef fajita, you don't have to use it for fajitas, peekaboo, you can use it for your beef pot pie, okay? I am going to put pepper. Now, for this one, I am going to put some onion powder. Now, you can put onions if you would like to, I just want the taste, but guess what y'all, I have a video that I'm going to release. Um, tomorrow morning or sometime I, I think so oh and um, also another way for you to get around celery if you don't like celery celery seed and I'm gonna add some celery seed to this one so we have that now you see this? Cream of mushroom with roasted garlic and golden mushroom. Some people may have seen these and be like, what am I supposed to do with golden mushroom? Funny you should ask. I'm here to answer your question. You see this golden mushroom? Yes. Let me already show you. Now, this one, it's going to have a little more going on than the chicken one. But once again, you could have stopped at the seasoning. And you don't have to use both of these like I'm doing it at all. This is just a recommendation. Now, you can also add Worcestershire sauce to this which I'm not to this one today, but you can. This right here is beef broth. Walmart, holler. I'm just gonna add a little bit and I'm adding it basically because of the potatoes. The potatoes. A little liquid to help us with cooking these potatoes. I'm going to add a little bit more. There you go. And you can also use these types of soups if you wanted to do like some chick, I mean some um, liver. Old school calf liver. Yeah. Get your pie crust. This is so simple. And um, you can, this is something you can teach your children to make. I mean, hey. Now for those who want everything by scratch, you're more than welcome. But you wanna reach across generations, you need to find something that someone can make at home. Find something that someone can make at home. So my youngest son's um, friends who are 17 and 18 they follow me on IG and they stay in my stories and then they have also joined us on YouTube but they don't come out to these type of things 
but they watch the videos and stuff and they send them to me and be like, Mama Dorsha, can I come over? Can I come over? Yes, Latanya, golden mushroom. All right, now we're gonna put this in here. You see this? Yes. You can have it your way. Now, if you're a person who likes spicy, then you could have put some cayenne. You could have put, matter of fact, something else that would have been great to add to it. It's this. This is from Trader Joe's. If you have a Trader Joe's, you could add this and this will take it up a notch. But I'm not because my husband isn't a fan of spicy. Now I did put fresh jalapenos out of the garden into um, his uh, uh, omelet this morning, but that's something that he's trying to get used to. That what I just showed you, um, yeah, that's spicier than the jalapenos out of the garden. Now the jalapenos out of the garden, I did um, de-seed them though but they were still hot. <clears throat> now, go ahead and put your crust on top of here. I hear I hear them outside talking. I hear my husband talking. He talking to broke. <laughs> yes. That's gonna be fire. I love using golden um, mushroom on a roast. Yes, it's good on that. And also another thing that these soups are great for is crock pot cooking. Anyone in the crock pot cooking? Yes, you set those in there. Let's say you had a chuck roast. You season it well, pan sear it on both sides, cut up some vegetables, put it at the bottom of the crock pot, put your meat on top, Get some of these, mix them up. May want to add some broth to get them, you know, a little looser. Pour it on top, set it. While you're at work, come home and the whole house is humming. Woo, what y'all know about that? So there, there, there you have it. Let's do this again. You can do your egg wash if that is your preference. There you have it, okay? Another one in the oven. The other one is cooking away. <clears throat> Was that simple? Was that simple? Five show of hands in the chat. Was that simple? Found out and sent my information. Yes, thank you. I, it'll be my pleasure to help you out with that. Barb, how are you doing? Hello, yes. You will love in baked chicken, baked pork chops. Yes, it is delicious. I've been sleeping on these mushroom soup. Yes, so no crock pot. Use my solar oven like a crock pot. Hey, there you go. Found you and sent my information. Simple. Yes. Cooking with beautiful doors. Thank you, God's construction. High five, Dorsha. Uh, very simple. Now, if you want to be more in-depth and you want it all homemade, then it's not a fast fix. But it can be a Sunday supper, right? You can go out into your garden and get the carrots, cut them up, pick the peas. You can grow the potatoes. You can do whatever you want to do. But this was a fast fix. What it's going to allow is for us to eat tonight and my husband to have something to eat for the next couple of days. Because you would think, well, he's a big man, hardworking man, and he can probably eat a whole pot pie by himself. Yeah, it would probably take him about three days to eat a whole pot pie by himself. He's not a big eater. He is not a big eater. And then once once I um, make his plate, it take him, he'll heat it up about three times before he finishes a plate. Dorsha, we wearing the exact same wet spot. Oh, <laughs> it's 
Yeah, from the kitchen, right? But hey, don't 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 miss the bigger picture. Wahoo wah, Virginia, University of Virginia. Wahoo wah, wahoo wah, you can't beat Virginia. Hey, hey, hooray, give it up for UVA. Woo, 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 woo. So y'all got me singing. I was trying to be in my best behavior. The cleanup is minimum for this. Look, you know, I told you use your little bag to collect your um garbage. Hey, this was a wrap. Sharif won't be overwhelmed with a bunch of dishes. Now, um, I'm making shortcuts on everything. So even like the brownies I made, these were just box tonight, nothing special. But y'all do know I know how to make homemade brownies, peekaboo. Matter of fact, I have a video on it. Skillet, chocolate brownie. Yes. But yeah, so we just doing this. But Talenti. Talenti. Did you see that? Ooh. Oh, honey. Woo! I'm a Virginia Tech fan. Dorsha, that is where you went to school. Yes, that's where I went to school. I'll be passing these recipes on to my sister. No more long road home. Quick and easy. Yes. And if you are a working mom, if you are a working mom, you need fast fixes. And you also need not to be having to let your um, children eat what someone else made every day. Like Chick-fil-A. Love you, Chick-fil-A, but um, you wasn't meant to be in the house every single day. You like a special occasion. <laughs> so, you know, I have had multiple walks of life, so I get to chat with y'all a little bit before I let y'all go because I didn't, I'm not going to keep y'all all day today. I'm getting off of here. You know what I mean? Because y'all know where I'm going tomorrow. Where am I going? Canada. Yes. I had to make sure my hubby be all right. We're gonna share this simple meal together. I started packing throughout the week, um, putting things, you know, here, there, the other where, you know what I mean? Just trying to make sure you don't forget anything because it's not like, oh, I forgot this or I'm gonna be back in just a couple of days. No, we're gonna be there for, you know, five days. So, um, yeah. Um, but we'll be able to have this simple meal that I'll be able to enjoy with them. But as I was about to share, so of course I was single. I know what single life is about. And when I was single, my favorite meals to make for myself were a pot pie, a frozen pot pie, um, the cheap like banquet frozen pot pie. As long as that crust was all right, honey. As long as that crust was all right, I was good, okay? Um, some ramen noodles, add some jalapeno peppers and some hot sauce. It was all good. And some Captain Crunch. And then I learned to like um, Frosted Flakes. So that was my meals as a single person, right? But I've been cooking since I was a teenager. So in college, on Sundays, my friends would want me to cook. So we'd go to the grocery store, we would get food. Um, you know, they would get it. I didn't have to pay for it. And I would cook. Well, I would cook. There was a, like a big kitchen at the dorm at, at our dormitory, and it'll be like maybe about anywhere from ten to twenty of us, and that's how my friends would have a home cooked meal while they were away from home, and you know, New York, California, all across the country. You know what I mean? So single life. Then I got married. Um, the children's father, and I was able to be an at home mom. I was a homemaker. Right? Um, so some people use these terms loosely, but let me um, clarify. Um, a homemaker. Homemaker is, well, somebody would say at home mom, a housewife, and a homemaker. I was a homemaker. So at home mom, the focus is the children. A housewife, the focus is the husband. The homemaker, that the the focus is the house and everyone that's in it. The husband, the children, 
and all of the affairs of the household. That's, you know, it's like you the COO of the family, the children, the husband, um, everything. So I was a homemaker. So when, you know, the children's father would come home, yeah, I mean, a home cooked meal every day, except for Friday. Friday's my day not to cook. So normally we would go out to eat, whatever. And then, you know, he traveled, whatever, whatever, he would come home because he used to travel like maybe Monday through the Thursday, whatever, then come home. And so then he didn't want me cooking because he wanted to be able to spend time. So we would go out as a family probably most of Friday, Saturday, and then I'll cook on something. Then I became a divorcee and single parent. So now it's like, okay, I got to get back into the workforce. I need my children to be taken care of. But I was able to get back into the workforce with me being an entrepreneur, a business owner. And I still have that business to this day, business and marketing consultant. But as a freshly divorced person, I went to school online. I got my MBA and then put that with the years of experience I already had, you know, so nonprofit work, government work, whatever, put that together, the principles that I know, and then also television. Um, some of you may or may not know, I started out at CBS television. I was the youngest employee in the nation at 16 years old. I got a, I won a scholarship and a job with them for five years. They paid for a big sum of my college education at the University of Virginia. Wahoo, wah, wahoo, wah. So yeah, it was the essay competition. It was for a state, uh, it was statewide for minorities who were interested in media. And um, my guidance counselor told me about it. I didn't put too much thought in it. I just won the Arms English Award. Say, hey, what are you doing to some of you? You want to get a job? I was like, yeah, I want to get a job. Well, do this essay real quick. I did an essay. I didn't think nothing else of it. Next thing you know, I'm at an interview. Next thing you know, I have a job. And I'm sitting there working for CBS Television, which at that time was ABC Television. So anyway... So I put all that to use and then now I have clients and I have clients and, um, you know, whatever, but I still have the flexibility. I can cook meals for my children. So, um, in the morning time now, nah, sometimes, you know, I got into the point where they could take care of their breakfast. I paid for their lunch. One year we did the, Oh, take your lunch to school, whatever. The next year, oh, let me rewind back. When I was at, when I was a homemaker, I homeschooled my children. So that was another part of what was going on. Now they're in the public school system, and um, yeah. So when they came home, every night when they came home, home cooked meal, except on Fridays. Friday is our, you know, we order something, we go out. You know, a lot of times we would go out. So that was me as a um single mom a divorcee then i remarried sunday backyard farmer became my husband um he is not demanding or picky um but when we married i was no longer doing my own business i am a county executive i'm chief of staff for an elected official i run an administration that is that oversees the livelihoods or really the outreach for public health, court systems, everything for uh, almost 170,000 constituents. So, and I have employees, we have different locations, this, that, the other. So now it's basically still just doing what I was already doing for my children. It's just like, you know, I was already cooking. So now it's like I cook for my husband and then, you know, when, Sharif went to live with his dad for a couple years. Then it was just me and him. And he's not that demanding. So I could cook something or I could not cook something. He tries not to stress me. My job can be very time consuming. So sometimes it's like, well, let me find something quick and let me find something more elaborate, whatever. We can just flow. And then we can do date nights and this, that, the other. So here we are. And then during the pandemic, you know, I was doing all of these Sunday suppers where you see more of our family members coming over. But there was a halt put into that because of the pandemic. So, um, well, it's like pandemic and then we're coming out of the pandemic and then kind of going back into it. You know, it was all of that going on. So here I am now. And I just want to share different parts of, you know, things I have learned over the year. Cooking is just one part of it on my Wednesdays. I share little nuggets that I've, I've learned on my, um, my life's path because we are spiritual beings 
um, having a human experience. That's what we are. We are human beings having a spiritual experience. I mean, having a human experience. So I share that. But um, if you go into my videos, there is a playlist and I have a blog. So I have a, a couple of blogs, but I'll probably will start doing more of those. And one of them will be based off of my trip to Canada. Because I want to share more about things that I like to do, like travel and fashion. And you get to meet some of my friends. And I just want to share who it is what life is like with Dorsha. I'm just a human being, but to God, to Jesus, I was worth dying for. So I think that's shareable. So thank y'all for joining me. Let me see what y'all are talking about. Oh, I'm a homemaker. Hey, she was just here. Learn something every day. Rejuvenate fitness. <laughs> we coming for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I look forward to seeing y'all when I get back in the country. How nice. That's why things flow smooth like silk. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hey, Callie, how you doing? There's someone else in the chat that is in California. Hey there, Dorsha and Chat. Sticking my head in to show some love. Thank you for sharing. Lynette, how are you doing? Yes, it looks simple. Yes, we are spiritual beings. Yes. Let's check on our first pot pie. Yes, it has come along. I'm not going to keep you on here the whole time while, while it's baking, but I did want to share this. So you take your brownie, you cut it up in like little pieces, whatever. Now you could, you know, do like a, a brownie sundae and go ahead and get you some um, chunks of bananas and then you put your gelato and then your caramel drizzle on the top. But we're not going to do all of that, but we are going to put the gelato on top of the brownie. And yeah, we're gonna make it do what it do. So thank y'all so much for joining me. And I do want to pray with y'all before we get off of here, like I do every Sunday. Okay. Now somebody's supposed to say, "Gosh, I want to come up there and pray for you while you're traveling." Peekaboo! But y'all know this is not Streamyard. This is YouTube. Mm. <laughs> On Streamyard, I can think, hey, the sweet spot. What am I missing? Bar, great live. Dorsha, have an enjoyable, fun, safe trip. Have a blessed, healthy, and safe night weekend. Thank you. Praise you. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day and yet another opportunity to live, love, and serve you. Now, Lord, as we go forth throughout our weeks, even though I'm going to Canada, it applies to everyone at the sound of my voice. No hurt, harm, or danger will come near their dwelling place. Every place that they set their feet is blessed. It is protected. And there's provision there. Not just financial provisions, but provisions of good health and peace and love and calm. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for blessing the health of our bodies, the sanity of our, of our mind, and the quality of our relationships. I get that from Bishop Ron Peekaboo. We thank you, Jesus, for your blood. We thank you for your stripes by which we are healed, your blood, we are redeemed. We're going to intentionally be a light and the love in this dark world. We're going to let our light so shine that people will see our good works and glorify our Father that is in heaven. And that is our earnest prayer. And all of the chat said, amen. Amen. Yes. So if you haven't, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to me on Instagram. You can see my tribute to my beautiful, wonderful husband who's going to take me to the airport tomorrow. With all my heart, I love you Sunday. Stay with me and you will see my arms. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, till next time, I will see y'all out in these YouTube streets. And I will be going live on Wednesday from Toronto, Canada. Stick around. I'll see y'all soon. Be safe. Love you. Bye-bye.